Hello, Thoughts and Bolts will give you a sneak peek into the dazzling world of comics. I am sure you all have read comics, but where did they come from? Well, you can say they came into being just how humans evolved from their ape brotherhood. Of course, comics are not as old as human evolution. But humans had started freaking out with a bit of drawing and painting about 20,000 years ago on the cave walls of Altamira in Spain and Lascaux in France. So comics are in a way writing with pictures. One fine example of picture writing that each one of you must have seen somewhere or the other are the hieroglyphics from Egypt. You can say ancient Egyptians communicated by the means of pictures and alphabets that also look like logos and forms. So let us begin with a quick recap of the history. The reliefs of the column Trajan in Rome created in 113 AD is another early example of sequential art. It was created for King Trajan, glorifying his military exploits. Over time, art became a mainstream subject and some brilliant artists continued to emerge. As they realized they needed more than one canvas to tell a story, they started experimenting with sequence in art. Here, William Hogarth created a series of paintings, Mariage à la Mothe, in the year 1743. The story starts in the mansion of Earl Squander, who is arranging to marry his son to the daughter of a wealthy but mean city merchant. It ends with the murder of the son and the suicide of the daughter. As printing techniques developed, due to the technological advances during the Industrial Revolution, magazines and newspapers were established. These publications utilized illustrations as a means of political and social satire. Such illustrations later became known as cartoons in the 1840s. The Glasgow Looking Glass, published in 1826, was arguably the first comic strip. European comics also traced their history to Swiss teacher, author and artist, Rodolf Toffer's cartoon strips in the 1830s. Max and Mohitz Written and illustrated by Wilhelm Busch is the most renowned German language illustrated children's literature. The story of the rascals Max and Mohitz has been translated into around 300 languages and was published in 1865. Ukiyo-ye, meaning pictures of the floating world, is a genre of woodblock prints and paintings that flourished in Japan from the 17th through the 19th century. Manga has evolved from such traditional art and now it has a huge stature, not just in Japan, but the rest of the world. I am sure you all are familiar with the animated manga series known as Anime on Television, Bleach, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z and so on. The Adventures of Tintin was created in January 1929. It is a series of comics created by Belgian cartoonist Georges Remy, who wrote under the pen name Hergé. Superman is a superhero that appears in comic books published by DC Comics and is considered an American cultural icon. Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, then students at Cleveland's Glenville High School, first conceived Superman as a bald telepathic villain bent on world domination. Then later, he was changed into a superhero, with Shuster remodeling Superman on Douglas Fairbanks Sr. Batman, the world-famous character, was created by artist Bob Kane and writer Bill Finger and first appeared in Detective Comics No. 27 in May 1939. Originally named as the Batman, the character is also referred to as the Caped Crusader, the Dark Knight and the world's greatest detective. Another really popular comic series among teenagers is Archie. Archie's first appearance in Pep Comics No. 22 on December 1941 was drawn by Montana and written by Vic Bloom. Archie was partially inspired from a real-life teen heartthrob, Mickey Rooney. Nick Knatterton is a German comic strip character, drawn by Manfred Schmidt from 1950 to 1959. He is a private detective who always dresses in a Sherlock Holmes style, green plate overcoat and cap, and smokes a pipe. Another German comic book worth learning about is Mosaic, first published in December 1955. It is the longest-running European monthly comic book and the only one originating in East Germany that exists till date. The Adventures of Asterix is one of the most popular Franco-Belgian comics in the world. 
The protagonist character Asterix and his friend Obelix have numerous adventures drinking magic potion in the land of gods. The series first appeared in the pilot in October 1959. In the 1970s, Jim Davis created a comic strip called Norm Nat, which met with little success. Davis decided to take a long hard look at the comics and he saw that dogs were doing really well, but there were no cats at the time. He figured that since he had grown up on a farm with 25 cats, he could come up with a strip based on a cat. He then proceeded to create a new strip, the supremely lazy Garfield, which looked quite funny initially. It held the Guinness World Record for being the world's most widely syndicated comic strip and was featured in 2580 newspapers and journals. Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Watterson is another dead famous comic strip about a precocious, playful and adventurous six-year-old boy and Hobbes, his sardonic stuffed tiger. Graphic novels is another format of comics that have become quite popular nowadays. They involve lengthier stories and have a more complex narrative. While comic books tell a story over many issues, graphic novels have their storylines wrapped up in only one or a few books. Watchmen by Alan Moore was published by DC Comics in 1986 and 87. It depicts an alternate history where superheroes emerged in the 40s and 60s, helping the US to win the Vietnam War. Mouse is another graphic novel completed in 1991 by American cartoonist Art Spiegelman. It depicts Spiegelman interviewing his father about his experiences as a Polish Jew and a Holocaust survivor. The book uses postmodern techniques, most strikingly in its depiction of races of humans as different kinds of animals. In 1992, it became the first graphic novel to win a Pulitzer Prize. Blankets is an autobiographical graphic novel written and drawn by Craig Thompson, published in 2003. The book tells the story of Thompson's childhood in an evangelical Christian family, his first love and his early adulthood. The book was widely acclaimed for its gripping style and storytelling. Some other really good ones are V for Vendetta, Sandman, Why the Last Man, Coast World, Sin City, Preacher, Death Note, Persepolis, Epileptic, Bone, Akira and so on. Oh, this reminds me, how could we forget talking about Indian comics? India's comic industry began in the mid-1960s when the leading newspaper The Times of India launched Indrajal Comics. Initially, we had titles like The Phantom, Mandrake, Flash Gordon, Rip Kirby being translated to Indian languages and then came Amar Chetra Katha, coming up with 100% Indian content. With the evolution and increasing readership, we got our own superheroes. Raj Comics created famous superheroes like Super Commando Dhruv, Nagraj, Toga, Parmanu, and some light hearted comic characters like Pakilal, Billu, Pinky, Chacha Chaudhary, Lambu Motu, and Krupan. Famous comic creators from India include Abit Surti, Uncle Pai, and cartoonist Pran Kumar Sharma. Talking about cartoons, it would be unfair not to mention Mr. R.K. Lakshman famous Indian cartoonist, illustrator and humorist, best known for his creation, The Common Man, for his daily cartoon strip, You Said It, in the Times of India, which started in 1951. India's once flourishing comic industry is now facing a sharp decline because of increasing competition from satellite television and the gaming industry. Contemporary comics continue to enthrall and engage millions of readers across the globe. They are available in almost every possible language and for every age group. Sometimes they are purely for entertainment purpose, but at other times it is a statement against the society or the political system. Even comics have diverse categories and forms. Some of the formats commonly seen are comic strips in national dailies or weeklies, graphic novels, comic books, web comics and manga. Comics have played a critical role in gifting readers an exciting alternate reality with characters they believe in and look up to or those that have made them laugh out loud. 
how fascinating it is to breathe with a character at the turn of every page. It's not just about some cartoons, a few panels in a bundle of pages, but the stories that linger on. And this brings us to the end of our story about comics. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.